Hey, Bandu, welcome to the show. As a way of getting started, give us a little background on yourself. Thanks, Ben. Happy to be here. Um, uh, I'm, I'm Jay Prakash Bandhu. I go with the last name Bandhu. Uh, and uh, been with uh, uh, Emphasis for the last uh, 21 years. I started as a programmer, uh, C uh, Unix programmer, and then uh, grew up the ranks on the delivery uh, production side. Then one fine day, a VP called me saying that you talk too much, you want to join sales. <laughs> <laughs> that's said, the only qualification you need <laughs> yeah so i said yes yeah i don't know anything but it means i used to grow the business even on the delivery side yep. then i said yeah i'm happy to uh, try that and i joined the team and i thought i'll get a training for about a year or two in two weeks somebody designed he said you're the guy who's going to run those accounts <laughs> so that's how i ended up in sales but I didn't realize that I had some talent uh, that, that could help my company. So the very first year, I was nominated for Rookie Salesperson of the Year. And, and I realized that there is something that I can bring to the table. And went on to do sales for about 10 years and won the Global Sales Exemplar of the Year, some of my awards uh, there, twice. I am like one of the only guys who won that twice. I would have won a couple of more years. We didn't do the awards. So very successful sales career. And last three years, I moved up to become uh, the uh, general manager. I do both sales, delivery, industry, solutioning, all the functions for a unit uh, in emphasis. Wow. That's me, Brian. Wow. All in a little snapshot. All at one company. All in the same company. And in fact, my current boss, he hired me from the college. So campus placement, uh, fresh graduate from college, uh, directly into emphasis. And I have been here first four years in Bangalore, India, uh, and then uh, moved to Virginia, uh, Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee, and now here in Dallas, Texas. Wow. <clears throat> and what do you think enabled you to become good at sales, other than only being the person there? <laughs> No, I, I, I think it is, you know, sales has been hard work, uh, right? Uh, it, it just, it, it's, it's physical hard work, right? Uh, along with all other things, uh, what I realize is, you know, in when you're on the other production side, delivery side, you sit and write code and manage programs. This is like, you know, take the bag and get on a flight, get on a car and go to places, uh, figure out things and uh, get ready and, you know, press your shirt and, go meet the clients, right? Yeah. So there's a physical part of it, a sincere hard work. And personally for me, the deep delivery background uh, came as a huge help, uh, right? So when I'm selling something to the client, I exactly know what I'm selling. And the clients can look into my eyes and say that, yeah, I, 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 this guy gets it, right? Okay. I think that is one of the factors that it's hard work and preparation uh, and more importantly, what helped me, I think uniquely is, uh, I did exactly what I'm selling. I yeah. delivered what I, what I'm selling. Uh, so that, that certainly helped. Uh, Brian. And how did you learn the business side of it? You know, cause you know, being, cause I came from that background as well. So you do really well with the technical people, but they don't, you know, get the purchase orders done. They don't know how to get the big money allocated and things tend to stall. How did you learn the business side about justifying it, getting it done politically and administratively? I think it's, uh, you know, I, I go back to Steve Jobs' comment where he says, you know, Indian village, there is intuition. Uh, so it's the way you grew up, your uh, uh, background. And I, I come from a small village in India and you figure things out. Right, and that nothing comes to you. I think it's the natural muzzle, uh, right? And I come to I come down to hard work and be very open to learn from my peers, my peers, my bosses, my one downs. I say emphasis is a sales university, right? There is a guy always trying to willing to help you, right? When you don't know, you should be very proud of that because you should be proud of what you know. And you should be proud of what you don't know. That's what I, I was. And I would go to people, sit for like five, six hours to learn a topic. 
Yeah. So some of the mentors who are like went to the big business schools, they would sit down and teach you like negotiation. I think the hardest part of sales is negotiation, all right? You now following up purchase orders, all that, I would go back and put it in the hard work bucket. But you know, how do you negotiate, right? Because most of the time, other side, the, the, the clients have very trained negotiators, right? So, you know, most of it comes through experience. You know, initial years, I always use somebody to help me. Uh, later, you know, uh, that, that was my strength, uh, how to negotiate and do the right thing for both the sides, right? It's easy to say that, but very, very difficult to execute. And that's how we succeed. And we are here for a long game, right? Yeah. Not for one deal and then, and especially my profile, like being the same company, like forever, I, I'm never trying to sell a deal and move on to the next deal, right? right. You sell it, you deliver it, you make sure there is a right team assigned. I think that helped. Yeah. And what motivated you? Was it the adventure? I mean, because here you are, it's not your country, right? It's brand new industries. You're fish out of water in many ways and, and the company's relying on you, right? Yeah. Are you motivated by the adventure, the challenge? No, uh, see in the delivery, uh, there is a limit for what you could do, especially in a services company like Emphasis. Uh, again, I, I saw you were on the board of Stelligent. Stelligent is bought by Emphasis and I, I actually sell uh, Stelligent services now. Yeah. Uh, you know, it is, it is the, you know, I, I saw a ton of money. You know, there is no two ways about it, right? You do the same amount of hard work on the sales side. Hey, there is, there is, I, I, what I say is unlimited potential, right? <laughs> A boss <laughs> once told me that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, in delivery, there is a, you know, you can, everybody has their own perception. My perception, delivery, you can go to the next level. You can do one more, you can do two more. But in sales, you can sell the deal every day, right? And you make money, right? Yeah. Who doesn't want it, uh, right? So also, interestingly, what I tell people, you know, in delivery, I was very successful. I worked hard. I was right. unmarried, bachelor, nothing to do. Yeah. I'm a teetotaler. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to party. So sit and work, work, work. Weekdays, weekends, uh, yeah. right? I write code uh, all the time, right? Uh, and the way I felt proud is anything I touch in delivery was turning gold. You know what? I'm done with this success. I want to go fail. Now, I used to joke like that, but then you get to sales, you fail every day, right? There is a rejection. It was hitting hard, right? Oh my God, I had a large team and I would assign work and they would deliver. Suddenly I'm in sales. I sell something, somebody says, this is not good. You are not good. Your product is not good. I'm like, that, that was very exciting. Uh, right. And as you learn the game and figure out and start selling, the wins are, again, equally exciting, if not more. And I would celebrate every milestone in the wins, not just the winning and signing the deal, you know, step by step and take the team together. So then the excitement came and it continues even today. You know, you win deals, you lose deals. Uh, it's fun. And how about as far as getting into leadership? What motivated you there? See, I was not ready. And I didn't want to. <laughs> I was not ready. My boss called me and said, you are now vice president. Uh, right? I'm like, no. I, you know, with the, the guy who hired me eventually became my business unit leader. And he said, you know, you are the vice president. I said, no, I'm not ready. He said, no, you're ready. You, you go do it. I am like, I picked up things and started figuring it out. Then the most challenge in the leadership of what I saw to make your peers work for you, right? That never happened before for me, right? Suddenly you're here, somebody you thought you are, they're senior to you, they're equal to you, they're more smarter than you. And why would they work for you? I think I, I, I summarized into one line. I am here to figure out a way to make smarter people work with me. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say what they work for me, right? They work with me. I am just the arc leader, but I'm going to give them equal respect uh, or more. And 
help them succeed in what they want to do so that that's how i was not ready for the challenge the, my boss threw into it i picked up i said you know what now i'll figure out then later when i became senior vice president i really enjoyed that right it's a much bigger role more recognition industry more importantly it was helping my clients to perceive me a little better that i i i bring you know i, I have more power to execute things for them uh, started seeing more uh, respect in the in the market which is helping win more deals helping my sales team win deals right so i am now the senior vice president senior vice president and general manager and really really enjoying this role uh, brian and how do you do that with people because most leaders take the shortcut the authoritarian approach do it my way my way works and don't give people that independence the autonomy yeah so there are several small things i believe right first thing is like what i do i think unique is there are no meetings right and there are meetings all day yeah. right i don't have a, a like a weekly review call right there is no pipeline review call there is no you know win strategy lab uh, right see some of those calls make make it like you are like the boss and everybody reports to you right the only call i run every week is i have this agenda like you know weekly i have focus every day i have a certain focus you know monday i focus on training right you know personal personal improvement my personality improvement uh, professional uh, growth my teams and external teams right it's all about talent enrichment that is monday's thing tuesday is phone calls one on one phone calls right i want to delete all the meetings that i have and just call people start calling people like wednesday thursday is the large deals you know entire thursday i request everybody to stop and drop anything they are doing just focus on creating a large deal or moving a large deal or closing a large deal so 90 minutes thursday morning i request everybody to join this call sit and talk right so like that i have these themes but this thursday theme of large deals works extremely well right nobody can talk bring up a topic that is small yeah. right over a period we learn it if there is nothing we'll sit and talk you know some personal things otherwise the focus is only talk about large deals on on thursday so no agenda my meetings will have no agenda right we have so much time you know everybody is like oh, 30 minutes here and 30 minutes there and oh, i have run to other meeting i am like you always have a priority is this discussion getting a quality closure more important or the next meeting is more important and constantly evaluating that and so that way i think the team feels good about it right there is no there is not someone bossing around all right and everybody wants to succeed why would they be in my team if they would don't want to succeed yeah. uh, right i trust them and give that complete autonomy <clears throat> and i'm here to help you that's right. a piece. i think too many managers fill up the day with stuff that's important to the manager and gives the people no time to do the real work yeah so that way exactly what happened to me i don't want to do it like in a negative sense i don't want to do it for others yeah. right now some of this is like my boss has no weekly call I, it's unbelievable at this level we don't have a weekly call we don't go sit and like you know go uh, go go through the table and talk right but we are talking every day right right so i i i learned that and i implement that uh, right and i think the teams like it uh, right now there is a large deal there is an important client one logo we want to close i have a daily 30 minutes meeting right and we go into that meeting and there's like every day what do we do right we break our heads a new idea comes right we don't know we we, we tried three different ways it didn't work we are not even getting an opening now we sit there fourth idea comes yeah. but you left out friday what's friday for talking to me <laughs> no, so uh, uh, so uh, fridays are usually uh, we are focusing on the support processes right you know 
uh, sales you know i am i am a general manager but as you know 90% focuses on sales right yeah. if we can get the revenues uh, that solves many many problems uh, right so friday can we collaborate with others because every dep- every department is important right you need the legal team so what i what i do something interesting uh, i don't know others realize that not when i send my deals for say legal guy team or finance team or uh, risk review team right i tell them this is important day i also tell them this is not an important day right otherwise everybody is throwing at the kitchen sink right <laughs> throwing the kitchen sink at them and they treat every deal same yeah. but i am like hey this is important this one do whenever you can or do with some new trainee you have in your team right i don't want to drop a deal i don't want to lose a small deal or you know a, a smaller client but i don't want you to hurt that uh, hurt my other deals or my peers deals also right it's very important for the company that we focus right energy in the right place so that that i think uh, adds respect to my team right you know bandhu will send a note saying that you know this is not important now sales guys may not know that right i just do this on the side so that we are doing the right thing that's my job as a sales leader but i mean you're in a pretty tough space highly competitive hard to differentiate everybody the clients want to view it as a commodity H- how do you differentiate yeah like that's the number one number one uh, item uh, right i i i believe uh, every company has a differentiation and we have a huge differentiation right i go with the mindset that there are so many deals that we can win right and there are and you know after 15 years in sales i'm i'm saying this there are so many deals it is it is getting the right uh, client and right deal and we go solution that and and sell it right so the qualification is the differentiation the deal qualification the client qualification the deal qualification if i learn something every week it is the qualification process right because once you get into the deal you are going to solution it you are going to spend you know one month three months six months depending on the deal size and complexity and then you wait for the result more often than not i saw that at the end of the deal after we get the result especially when it is not awarded to us i realized that we knew the things before we started the deal and most clients are very transparent uh, right yeah. you know more and more there's a lot more transparency they tell us why we didn't win hey you didn't have a center in mexico that's why we didn't award to you i'm like yes they need a center in mexico we didn't have a center in mexico why did you spend four months on this right so if if there is one thing i learn every day try to improve myself my team help my team it is in the qualification if you do better it automatically differentiates right in this deal hey we bring three things right we have domain knowledge you know domain knowledge plays more importance than anything you know i run some of the high tech industries i run the airlines travel industries you know airlines we have very deep knowledge right so that's number one the number one many companies have it it's not enough hey this deal it's like a cloud deal it's like aws right i have intelligent we paid millions of dollars and bought the bought the capability so uh, i have the cloud native services knowledge i have intelligent you know what second factor huge factor what is the third factor right we have you know right people you know i am here for 21 years i think one of the biggest differentiation from emphasis is that we have tenured people right it changes the game now is this enough so what i actually call uh, uh, brian uh, i have a hunting stack you know you call it hunting stack or a selling stack that's my concept to win a deal you need several things so that is a stack right if you have technical knowledge it is it covers my stack 9% right if you have domain knowledge it covers 9% right if you have you know sometimes you have rela- like relationship right it's, it's a big thing maybe it is 20% sometimes it is 30% right sometimes it is 50% because the client was your past client we we have done yeah. five projects work together five years that is 50% you, you you can't win a deal because it is it still is 50% right so 
now these elements is my secret sauce right now i have stacks for types of deals okay so when i do a qualification i'm like how many elements you have in the stack and what is that one thing you don't have like this deal needs marketing right hey something that we can put together in the next 24 hours in 48 hours and you can fill the stack you are getting the 90% right you have a very high chance of winning yeah. right so i think differentiation is the broad concept so i have to take a long answer for that and explain all these elements uh, and bottom line is deal qualification and sales reps have a hard time with that because they prioritize based off of who will talk to them <laughs> you know which ones they want to work on uh not and what they end up doing is wasting a lot of time like your mexico example yes especially in your space because it's it's intangible in a lot of cases yes they can't touch it they can't see it uh it's a lot of trust that's required how do you help your reps with that it's it, it's it's very difficult right? because they <laughs> think this is this is a, a super duper deal we can win it i'll close it in a week and i'm not qualifying the deal right so i think the stack concept helped me i i put the stack in front of them i show that see what are the deals we won here is a stack what are the deals we lost here is the stack right i have no fun to disqualify your deal right i am more interested for you to win than yourself right so uh, and that trust has to be built now suddenly you know new team member joins and you know that that's where it takes time but over a period i am i am as interested as them to win that deal i am as i am very keen that every sales guy succeeds all uh, right so i will uh, you know that that impartial thing which is again the most difficult thing you know you get a lead whom do you assign right and each uh, i i spend a lot of time to understand the sales guy all right and my strength is to train my delivery team similar to me to train them into sales so there is a lot of mutual respect uh, on that uh, right so that helps me large part of my sales team is you know the team that was in delivery that worked with me on the delivery side and i identified and said hey you have that those skills like something like me if you want to come this side i am happy to train and help you so that team very clearly gets it when i say let us not pursue this we we talk others have rightfully have good questions they push back we try and sometimes you know we have to learn it hard way and we go pursue and we have you know some probability of winning or losing and take it yeah and you came highly recommended by your team what do you think motivated them to do that i think in one word respect i yeah. i respect all the people and i respect uh, the the what they bring to the table right and everybody has negatives right so so sometimes like some, some of my team members they just opposite to my thinking right i say hey i don't like it i don't agree with it that doesn't mean that you can't sell right yeah. i my my famous saying brand is there are thousand ways of selling i just know one of them right so your method i don't agree but you know what let us try right and there are guys who succeed like nobody's business <laughs> and yeah. every day the guy comes with a, a you know a statement of work sign i'm like how did you pull this off right i use my stack concept i use my all experience there is no way you can win this in this manner and you win it that's where i learned that you know there are thousand ways of selling i just know one of them so i am going to give respect and take a chance right there are a couple of team members uh it's it's fun to watch them you know we disagree all the time but that is on the on on that transaction right on that deal right yeah. but otherwise there is nothing personal here so that respect they know that i don't agree with what they are doing and i still support them i think that is the single biggest reason uh people recommend or you know whatever goodness that comes towards me and it is because of that is what i believe right well i think that the stack <clears throat> really kind of helps develop a judgment skill because time is 
our precious resource in sales. And, and, we're, and we're looking for, you know, an unfair advantage. <laughs> I like that. And if you don't have it, somebody else might. But, and, and it is kind of, it's an investment. It's an investment of our time. And, and I like that analysis of it because that's what I coach sales leaders on okay. instead of just activity KPIs what to work on in what order. Yeah. And where would you like to go with your career? You know, can I be the CEO of Emphasis, right? That is my childhood dream. Childhood in the sense when I joined Emphasis, I was dreaming that, you know, when this stage I will be a vice president, right? When actually it happened, I didn't want it, right? <laughs> but, uh, right? So, you know, I think I, I I'm glad uh, my boss gave the opportunity to run both sales and delivery. Otherwise, I was like a super excited sales guy. I just loved it, right? Yeah. I, I, on that on that note, you know, one thing I tell my all the people, all the sales people, be very proud as a sales guy, right? Don't find other words. Don't say I'm some business development, this thing, that thing, right? Sales guy. We should be very proud, right? Now, I I, I we sold the deal. I go land in the airport and we go for a demo. After that, the agents are coming and asking for a selfie, right? Because they had screens in, you know, written and mainframe, uh, you know, green screen, 30 years. They remember 100 commands to check you in. They have to type, type. You see that, you know, they, they keep typing all the time. We change that. We give a beautiful interface, right? They click, 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 you are checked in, right? And your bags are checked in. And you pay for excess baggage, right? They love it. And they, when they see that my team built it, they gave, they came and gave a hug. They want to take selfies, right? I'm very proud of what I sold, what we delivered, all right? So take pride in being a sales guy, all right? So I, I love sales, but with this new role of running as a business unit, I'm enjoying it. Uh, you know, can I make this, you know, double, triple, uh, right? Can I go from 50 million to 100 million, 100 million to 250 million business unit? We worked hard to build capability. We worked hard to build the IP uh, that we have, and we are ready to go to market and sell. You know, pandemic hurt us badly, but it helped us to build some of this IP in anticipation of things coming back. So I'm ready. So go double my revenues, triple my revenues, and run a large unit in emphasis and really contribute to the you know stock price and give back to the shareholders. Cool. Hey, I really appreciate your time today. Where can people go to connect and follow you? I'm, uh, my Twitter is jbandu, J-B-A-N-D-U. Uh, my LinkedIn, Jayaprakash Bandhu, they can search. Uh, I'm very, very active on LinkedIn. And thanks to LinkedIn, which actually played a big part of my career. Uh, right? I see you every day there. Uh, yeah, Twitter, LinkedIn, and I'm all over in all the, all the social media, uh, Facebook everywhere. And I'm very active in all of them. And thank you, Brian. Thanks for giving this opportunity and uh, had a chance to a good, good, have a good conversation with you.